Okay, so I'm with Steve Curtis. Yeah, my name is Steve Curtis. Uh, I'm the owner and operator of Aqua Ventures Limited. The dive center has been in operation here in Watamu since uh, January of 1990. We are one of the longest uh, established centers here. Consequently, we've had a lot of exposure to different conditions, different fish, different experiences. But the one experience that sticks very closely in my mind is uh, an incident I was involved in trying to free a humpback whale um, that was caught in a rogue drift net that was floating around in the ocean. There's nothing more beautiful than to see one of these creatures if you're lucky enough and hear one of the creatures when you're diving, but it's very distressing to see them hooked up on one of these great big nets that float around out in the ocean. I was called by a fishing boat to go and assist. Uh, the first thing I told them was don't get too close to the whale because the fishing net might hook around the boat and then pull the boat down. Um, the boat in question just stood by and waited for me to get out there. I, I went there with my diving equipment in another fishing boat. Armed with a, a kitchen knife that had been rapidly sharpened, I was lucky enough to get into the water very close to the, um, to the beast and she was accompanied by a calf swimming underneath her. It was very distressing to see that she was towing uh, a net of about, must have been two to three hundred meters long, which yeah. was supported by um, plastic boys. And obviously this was tiring uh, the whale out considerably to the point that she was coming to the surface every five minutes to take a breath of air. Wow. I was very conscious of the fact that it was a dangerous mission. and. Um, you know, the net could tangle around me and then start pulling me down as well. Uh, nonetheless, I decided to take the risk. Uh, I hacked away at this um, line. As soon as I'd put my hand on the line, the, uh, the whale got quite a fright and started swimming down with me. And when my ears started hurting, um, I realized I was a good three, four meters underwater. Trying to clear my ears at the same time as, as cutting the net was quite difficult. Nonetheless, I managed to do it and straight away, once I cut through the net, the uh, whale released itself and, and carried on swimming. However, she still had a little bit of fishing net wrapped around her pectoral fin and her mouth, and it was very difficult to get anywhere near her again. Um, she was able to stay down longer now that she had more energy, and the interesting thing to note was that she was on a particular bearing. This was confirmed by the skipper who was watching his compass. So he was able to tell very accurately where she was next going to sound. So uh, I went to the water at least another three or four times. Um, but each time I got close to her trying to free the pectoral fin and the mouth, um, I had this great big tail fin flapping past my head. And that is when I thought that it was enough and I should get out of there. And I was putting myself at risk. Uh, people often ask me if I freed the whale altogether. I said to them I wasn't sure, but I'd like to think that I gave her a fighting chance. But very distressing to note, there are lots of rogue fishing nets around out there which could pose threats to navigation, to boats, and, and these wonderful giants in particular. So where do these nets come from? Are they from here, uh, from local fishermen? Or? There is such a thing called a drift net. Mm -hmm. These things are just left out at sea. Some of them have homing beacons on them and boats are actually able to uh, visit their own nets by just following radio signals. Some of the nets... Uh, oh, they just leave their nets just drifting out at sea? Yeah, drift nets. Sometimes oh. they're anchored on the bottom. They're definitely a little bit of a hassle and something that should be looked at by, uh, by the authorities to see how legal these nets are, how close they are to shore and, and what sort of a hazard they pose to people, shipping and, and marine creatures as well. I noticed there's quite a lot of trash in the sea, plastic bags, uh, bottles. This is a universal problem as we know. Um, there is rumour that the uh, Mombasa people are dumping stuff out at sea on, on lighters. I don't know how true that is, but most of the plastic stuff we see here is in the form of um, hospital waste, plastic bags such like but we do get things from other parts of the world as well I've seen uh, a lot of plastic with Chinese writing on it um, mm. but it's not a problem that's unique to here it's a problem that is universally affecting everyone on the planet um, 
what time we're in particular at this time of year is susceptible because if you look at the geography of the land, the bay faces directly into the southeast monsoon, so it acts as a catchment area, whereas other parts up and down the coast are more of an angle to the prevailing wind at this time of year, so they're less affected. Um, the seagrass, of course, is something that doesn't look very nice, but uh, people ask why we don't move it. In fact, it's forbidden to remove the seagrass because it uh, protects the beach from being eroded away. In fact, if you dig down into the sand, you see there's layers of seagrass binding um, the mm -hmm. sand together. But plastic is a problem. Right. We know that. We have uh, coordinated beach cleanups every Thursday for plot owners on the beach and hotel owners. And we do have a couple of waste management um, companies that uh, are set up here who occasionally do concerted mm -hmm. pickups. But okay. uh, it's something that is bothering us and very, very distressing, especially the microplastic that forms into tiny little micro pieces which uh, gets ingested by fish and other marine creatures. And of course, the other thing that now is a little bit of a concern, uh, I saw some Indian house crows on the exposed piece of the beach, uh, exposed piece of the reef right in front of the hotel. And I thought to myself, what are those creatures doing there? But it didn't take me too long to work out that they were pecking away at little crabs, pecking away at little sea stars uh -huh. and, and other small marine creatures. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it would be really good if we could work out an eradication program for, for the, the crows. crows. So it's not well. only the plastic, it's the crows, yeah. drift nets and all sorts of other bits and pieces. And of course the big one for us, which I, I really am totally against, is the ring netting. If it can be controlled and they operate in approved areas, many, many kilometers off the shore, uh, shore fair enough, but once they start coming in close to shore, it does have a knock-on effect of the movement mm. of the, the, the pelagic fish up and down the coast. Right. Um, yeah, and I really hope it, it, it doesn't come to this area. Right. Thank you.